happy mother's day to all mothers out there and the ones who are not even mothers but still taking on responsibilities as mothers mother's day is all about celebration of mothers to express our gratitude love respect and constant support shown to us and to also celebrate mothers who are playing roles in our community when we celebrate mothers it's not necessarily mothers who gave birth to us, but mothers who have played a mother role in our lives. Joining me today is Barbara Adakwa, Lorna Archer, and later Nana Checha will join us. So I would like to come to you, Barbara. How are you going to celebrate Mother's Day? Um, I think for me, it's very important to have a full day of relaxation, peace and just try and unwind and chill out as much as I can. <laughs> and to you, Lorna, how are you going to celebrate your Mother's Day? Um, I think a little bit like Barbara. Definitely I'll be chilling out. Um, hopefully my, my two daughters will be um, pampering me in some shape or form. But I think just to have some peace, relaxation, you know, give thanks for just being a mother. Oh, that's great. Um, I'm also going to be celebrating with my mother at home because due to the corona, we can't really do much. So we're just going to stay at home and chill and watch TV. Today is Mother's Day, but I would like us to start this conversation with you sharing your experiences of becoming a mother for the first time. I would like to come to you, Lorna. Okay, yes. Uh, when I had my firstborn, I was um, I was still fairly, well, I was fairly young. Um, I was 20, 22 when I had my firstborn. Um, and I had a girl, uh, an amazing daughter. and But I was really ready to have this daughter at 22. And for that, I was living, you know, living life, um, my best life. But I was really called cool to be a mum age and it was a, a beautiful pregnancy um some of the birth was a bit traumatic but i was blessed with a beautiful daughter um and it changed my world so the firstborn um is normally the one where you know you're you're learning on the on the job so it was really it was exciting it was um a bit daunting but it was really rewarding when she was born so it was beautiful Wow, interesting. Let me come to you, Barbara. I know you had a baby recently. Take us back to the first time you became a mother. I became a mum at 18, so in my late teens, which is pretty early and very young for a lot of people. But um, for me, I would say it was definitely life-changing. Um, I had to grow up very fast. I had no choice but to embark on that journey the moment he was born because it was with me for life. But thankfully I had, and I still continue to have a great support system, which is my family, my parents, my siblings who are very helpful. So it was a smooth sailing pregnancy. Um, labor was nice, quick, four hours. Um, after I had him, I was still able to continue with my education um, and work. So. It was life changing, but I had a great support system. So it was a great life experience for me. Mm, okay. But I've heard stories about the aftermath of giving birth. What impact did it have on you physically? Um, physically, I mean, if you don't mind, I compare it to my other two pregnancies. So, like I said, it was a skin pregnancy. And I had heard so many women say that when you are young, much younger than a child, it's much easier physically. And I can definitely vouch for that. It was a very easy experience for me. I was still very active. I was still able to maneuver and do things that maybe some women would be able to do during pregnancy. So for me, what was physically doing labor again? was fine because my labor was pretty quick after I had him it was just, everything was just smooth sailing so for me I didn't really feel a negative physical impact so yeah and how about emotionally as well 
emotionally. He did emotionally because obviously prior to having him, I was a teenager. I didn't have anyone that relied on me in that sense. But after giving birth to him, I had to remember at all times in literally every decision I make that I have someone that's depending on me 24 seven. So um, emotionally, I couldn't just think about myself and make decisions based on my feelings alone. I had to consider him a great amount as well. Solana, how about you, the physical transformation and the emotional effects after giving birth? Um, very similar to what Barbara said, um, physically, um, I was strong in my body physically. Um, and I remember the day after having her, you know, I literally just sh shrunk back to my regular size. And I remember being in the hospital and some of the other mothers were saying to me that I was in the wrong room because there was like a, a, a room where you could go and have, um, tea after. Mm. And they were like, oh no, this is for the, the new mothers. I said, yeah, I've just given birth, you know. So physically, I felt quite strong in my body. Emotionally, it was just um, such a heartwarming, soul-filling emotion that overcame me. And I just felt like a completely different person, actually. It was just uh, amazing to know that I'd given birth to this beautiful child and she was mine. Um, so from an emotional perspective, um, I felt a real love um, for my child and um, I felt very proud of myself but I had a real sort of uh, emotional connection to this little baby who now was in my care and you know everything changed overnight everything literally changed overnight so physically I felt strong but I was tired you know giving birth is tiring um, I think Barbara was blessed with hers um, for four hours, I actually went into labour on the Monday and I didn't actually have my first daughter until the Thursday. So I was, um, it was a long process until she came out. But um, so that took a, a, a physical toll on, on my body, but I still felt strong within myself. But emotionally, it changes you. Um, it's a real deep, um, a real deep feeling. So, but a, a lovely feeling, very, very Warden. You went on to have your second child. How would you compare first time being a mother to your second time round? Second child, I felt it was a doddle. It was much easier. <laughs> it was like five <laughs> years later, I had my second child, another daughter. And even physically, um, I was, my shape was completely different for both girls i was convinced i was having a boy the second time because i was uh my shape was completely different i carried her differently my birthing experience was different for her uh, with her um but obviously i had another girl but it was easier i think because i knew what i was doing the first time it felt easier i wasn't feeling overwhelmed i wasn't feeling anxious i sort of had a rough idea although there was five years between them um, I still felt that I knew what I was doing. I had to sort of remind myself about a few things, but physically uh, it was easier. The birth was uh, much shorter. I was in and out of hospital very quickly. I was out the next day. My first child um, I was in for a week because I then got an infection. With my second child, I was out the next day. So completely different and from an emotional perspective, I think because I'd gone through it the first time, um, that sort of real deep love for your children, it really just sort of takes over uh, how you feel. And knowing now that I have two, I had two little ones who were under my care, my responsibility, it really, I felt very empowered um, within the role that I had as a mother to them. And, you know, I always say, you know, when you give birth to your children, you know, they will flourish and grow um, at their own pace and even when they become adults you're still their mother you're still their parent and they still need you but just in a different way so um, you know I'm going to be a mother for life and it's just lovely just knowing the journey that they have taken to this day so um, yeah second one was easier yeah so having said all of that how would you explain motherhood oh that's a very good question how how would I explain motherhood? Um, 
motherhood to me is um giving giving of yourself to to um somebody who's in need of your support somebody who is in need of your care being being there for for someone i.e your child listening and literally just being there you know you don't necessarily um i don't feel that motherhood is about giving up all of who you are because i'm still lorna um i just have an extra part of me which is being a mother um so motherhood is really about um sharing loving giving empowering um your children um to be the best versions of themselves. So motherhood for me was really about elevating myself to another level of womanhood, really. And Barbara, your definition of motherhood? Lorna basically summed it up in a nutshell. Um, a lot of people sometimes tend to think that the moment you become a mother, you sort of lose your identity and you know you can no longer embark on you know, endeavours that you've had planned for the future, but you can still be yourself. Um, you can still, you know, be a mother and be who you were prior to being a mother. And like Lorna said, again, it's it's a blessing that you carry with you for the rest of your life. You will always be a mother no matter how old your children are. Um, my oldest is 13 and I know he's still very young, but they all grow up so fast and I feel like very soon, you know, he'll have a beard, his voice will be broken, he'll be taller than me, he's almost taller than me now, but, you know, you still look at them as like, you know, your baby, your child, even though they're growing up, you still look at them like that and it's just, it's such a, an amazing blessing to have that comes with a huge responsibility, but it's just something that is also free flowing for so many of us as well. So the responsibilities that come with it are not anything that, you know, may feel like not, they're basically worth it. If you understand what I mean, like everything you do as a mother for your children is just worth it. So yeah, that's how I describe it. Lovely. I'm learning a lot from you, ladies. So I want to come back to you, Lorna. Um, I'm learning a lot from you guys. Lorna, your kids are much older. One is in her 30s and the other is in her late 20s. Whereas Barbara has a teenager and younger kids as well. Do you find similarities in yours and Barbara's experience? Yeah, I think, I think there are. I mean, as Barbara said, her eldest son is is thirteen. Obviously, it's a, it's a it's a different generation to to my generation. But at the same time, you know, I think the motherhood journey is is one which is very much similar. I might have um, some of what I experienced back then when I had my children. Maybe not what Barbara has experienced now, being more a recent mother. But I think the journey of motherhood is very similar for or can be similar for, for most mothers and the feelings that we have as mothers, I think that can be very much um, deemed as the same. You know, my eldest child is 33. My, yeah, 33 and my youngest is 27. And as much as yes, they are grown, they are adult women, being a mother, um, it doesn't, it you know, it doesn't matter what age they are, as a mother, or as a parent, your child is still going to need you at certain times in their life. So as much as I have two grown up daughters, there are times in their life where they still need my guidance, my advice, my honesty, my wisdom. And, you know, Barbara's eld uh, youngest, eldest is 13, but the, our journeys can still be the same in the sense of what her 13 year old may come with Barbara still has to give of herself as a mother um, and it will be the same with me with my 33 year old it's just that maybe they have different um, challenges or different questions which are posed to us but me and Barbara will still be sitting in this seat as mothers giving our wisdom giving our advice so it doesn't really matter what kind of age it just means that the the challenge or the issue or the question that is given to us um, our answers may be just slightly different of how 
our ch children uh, follow through with that. So it doesn't really matter what age they are. Sometimes you might think, okay, at 33, that you just leave them to it, but they're still going to come with, with questions because they're still learning. Listening to you guys, it sounds very easy and straightforward, but it can be challenging. I want you to share with us how you deal with family, friends, work, taking care of yourself, seeing to your kids. How do you juggle all these things? How do you do it? Um, so for me, um, as I said, when I had my son, um, I had a support system where I could go back into education, I could um, find employment, like get a job and finish school, etc. So having one child in the beginning, it was very easy for me. You know, for example, um, if I had a late lecture and um, I went home, let's say I got home by like 9.30, 10 p.m., I know that my son has been fed, he's had a bath, he's had his reading session, homework's been done, uniforms laid out for the next day and he's fast asleep. But after I had my second daughter, I can't yet speak on my experience with my third because I'm still on maternity leave and with COVID, there isn't really much you can do outside of the house. But after I had my second daughter, I saw a huge difference in you know, um, balancing work life and motherhood. And um, I let, let me add, I was living with my parents when I had my first child as well. So it was much easier. But after I had my second, that's when I moved out. And, you know, we're living under a different roof to my parents. So even in cases of childcare where my parents were given a helping hand, I would have to go over there. Sometimes it would be late night. Sometimes the kids are tired. Sometimes it's on a school night because I'm working late night. So it was a bit stressful in that sense. And sometimes it did become a bit difficult to balance it, despite the fact that I had help. But then it was just down to me to try and find the balance. So, for example, if I um, was creating content for my work in fashion, I would take my kids along with me where possible. So if I'm shooting outdoor and um, I have a photographer who is you know, okay with me bringing my kids. I would bring them along with me. So they liked the journey to central London, for example. I would buy them an ice cream. Sometimes I would give them the phone to try and shoot themselves. My son likes photography, so sometimes he would take pictures. So then I was able to find the balance between um, motherhood and working and also spending time with my kids because sometimes I felt like I felt a bit bad when I would put in too much overtime at work. I felt like I wasn't spending enough time with my kids. So once I found the balance, it was much easier for me. It's not easy. It's not easy. Um, you know, I'm not a mother, but I know where you're coming from because my mother went through the same thing. With you, um, Lorna, I'm sure you share similar um, experience back then as well when you had your kids. Yeah, a lot of what uh, Barbara says, uh, I can relate to. I mean, it was a different time back then. But, you know, when I had my first, um, so I was I was married um, years ago. And when I had my first, yeah, like Barbara, the support system was in place. And um, that network really did help to sort of be able to juggle my work and um, and being a mother at the same time. And I was in, I was in the corporate world back then. And... You know, it worked in the sense of um, juggling. Even when I had the second child as well, you know, that support network was there. But then part way through, um, as both girls were growing, I uh, my marriage broke down. And the reason why I bring that up, because the fact that I had this support network at the beginning, it was amazing because, you know, it was easy just to sort of juggle the children with childminders, husband, go to work, etc. But when that sort of network broke down, it became quite um, stressful for me in juggling um, the children and going to work. And I was in a very high profile job, um, which brought a lot of stress as well. And it was quite difficult to juggle it all and try and be there for the children, get home at a certain time, 
they feed them, bath them, all of that kind of stuff. So I went through some challenges there when um, when that happened. But, you know, I think as long as you communicate uh, effectively with the children so that they know, you know, what is it sort of expected of them, what's expected of, of me as the parent, um, it can work in the sense of, um, you know, juggling work and home life, but not always easy. It's not always easy. Wow, fascinating. Um, has there been any moment in time where you felt like, wow, this is too much for me. I can't do this anymore, Barbara? I'd be lying if I say, if I, say I didn't. Um, I can recall a time where um, I had to finish work quite late. It was my retail job. And um, when I got to my parents' house, um, my daughter was having her dinner, but for some reason she had had a bad day that day. So she was eating really late. And as soon as she heard my voice, she refused to eat. And um, I was actually pregnant as well with my third. So I was feeling absolutely horrible. The nausea was on a hundred. It was just such a bad day. And I just wanted her to eat quickly so that we can just, you know, go home and, you know, just get home and relax and sleep. But she didn't want to eat her food. So I had to now pretend to leave the house. I had to hide, um, like, by the staircase. Um, she took quite a while to eat her food. My son was feeling sleepy and he wakes up quite early in the morning because he has to take the bus to school, etc. Um, when we got home, um, I couldn't find the parking, so we had to park really far from the house. And then we had to walk about a 10 minute walk. I stopped midway through to throw up because I was feeling sick. Um, it was raining. It was just such a terrible day. And I remember when we got in and I finally got the kids off to sleep, I just had like a mini breakdown moment. And I was just like, I can't do this. I, and I've I've never felt like that to that extent where I've said, oh my gosh, I can't do this. But that night in particular, everything that could have possibly gone wrong that day had gone wrong. And I just felt absolutely rubbish and just terrible. And I just, I just broke down and I just said, oh my gosh, I cannot do this. It was just too much for me. And normally it's not really a big deal because kids can be fussy sometimes, they can be picky. They have their off days too, where they may not want to eat a meal or they may not want to go to sleep on time and stuff. But just sometimes it can get a bit too much and you just feel like ripping your hair out. But yeah, it was a stressful day, stressful day. <laughs> Wow. Wow. So, these are some of the challenges um, people do not see. Not, not as similar as, as Barbara and I, I, I feel, feel her pain there. I, I, could, I just visualised you on that day and I can, I can, I can relate and I can uh, empathise, definitely. Um, I think one of my experiences that really do come to mind, and I do remind my eldest daughter about this, um, and I don't know, Barbara, whether this relates to you, because obviously you've got three, but the whole teething, the teething phase can be quite, um, can be quite challenging for mothers. Um, and some children start teething at a certain time, some, you know, and sometimes it can go on for, for long. And I remember, I can't remember how old my daughter was. I think she was about between four and six months. And she'd been she started to teethe and you know during the daytime when you're sort of alert and you're just getting on with things it's it's more manageable it's more containable and you can just get on with what you're doing but sometimes when it comes to the night time it can be a bit challenging and I remember this particular phase that she was going through she was teething quite badly and her dad had gone out um that night I think he'd gone out uh, to a party with his friends and I was up yeah I've got it I've got it it's fine but bathed her put her to bed, um, but she woke up quite, I'd say about 10 or 11 o'clock in the night, um, crying and teething. And I just, normally I could really settle her. And on this occasion, I don't know why, I just couldn't settle her. And she literally cried nonstop and she was in so much distress and pain, literally for about, I don't know, four or five hours nonstop. And I knew he wouldn't, 
my my husband wouldn't be coming back until late into the early morning and I seriously said to myself I, I tried everything I, I tried putting her in the bath again just to soothe her with the warm water I fed her I soothed her I did everything that I possibly thought would pacify her and nothing would and I got to a stage where I literally just had to just put her back down into her cot and I broke down because I it was literally like four four to five hours of non-stop crying and you could see that she was in distress and for me as a mother seeing my child in distress and that I couldn't um the pain was obviously the teething was really um you know quite prevalent for her and that I couldn't soothe her for me that was my breaking point and I put her back into her her cot and I literally just sat down on the floor crying my eyes out but you know I didn't leave her in the room but I left her in the cot and I just and I just didn't know what to do and I think sometimes as a first time mum you know, you don't, um, they, the textbook really doesn't tell you about some of these things. You can read a book and it can give you some guidelines into different stages of when the child is going to be going through this and going through that. But I think the reality of it, when you're going through it, is and can be a completely different thing. And at that stage, I felt um, a bit of a failure because I thought, I can't soothe my child. I can't get her to a place where she felt comf comforted. And that was a really uh, difficult phase that I remember very clearly. Wow, wow, that that's amazing. It's, 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 it tells you nothing can actually prepare you. Nothing can really prepare you to being a mother, I should put it that way. So Barbara, you were speaking of um, support system. How important is it to have a support system? Um, I think it's very important to have a support system. Obviously, unfortunately, not everyone um, has that um, choice. But you know the saying, it takes a village to raise a child. It is, it's, it's so true because um, I, I have to keep stressing on the experience that I went through when I had my first because, like I said, I was still living at home with my parents. And to be honest, I don't know what route I would have taken if I didn't have the support system around me. But looking back now, I think I can confidently say I don't think I would have furthered my education. I don't think I would have gone back to school a week after giving birth. I don't think I would have, you know, found a job and, you know, gone round central London handing out um, CVs because at the time it was everything was on paper. I don't think I would have been able to do those things. So I think if you do have that support system around you, I think it's very good to take the opportunity and grasp onto it for as long as you can and allow people to help you to take care of your child. I think it's also important as a first time mum, especially like a young mum who is um, very much like, you know, inexperienced to once again have that support system around you because you're taught a lot. Um, my mum taught me everything I know now as to, you know, how to be a mother and, you know, just how to do your best and try your best, you know, every single, every single time. And obviously the other skills that come with being a mother as well, you know, how to breastfeed, um, how to potty train them, you know, um, how to help them with their homework, even little things on, you know, how to be patient with a child, how to be understanding of certain things that, you know, you didn't know as a, you know, a single, you know, woman before having a child. My mum taught me all of those things. And again, that's my support system. So I think it's very important to have that. And to add as well, um, my son, I didn't have a relationship with his dad. So I have my, I have, I still have my brothers around me and my dad. And because we were all living under one roof, I feel like he had that fatherly figure in his life to, you know, help him with the things that he needs to know as a little boy who would eventually grow up and become a man. So I think the support system is very important. But as I said, um, unfortunately, not everyone has that. But if you do have it, definitely grasp onto it and take the opportunity and allow people to help you as much as possible. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Nana, for joining us. Happy Mother's Thank Day. Thank you. Happy Mother's Day. <laughs> Happy Mother's Day. Hello, Nana, ladies. I'll come straight to you then. How was it like the first time you had your first child? 
How did they uh, how did they impact you physically, emotionally, and mentally? Wow. Um motherhood i i loved it because we were looking we're so looking forward to it and uh prior to that i was i was working and uh well when we got married i think it took two years before um the baby uh, our first daughter came along so we were we were excited we didn't know we didn't want it we didn't want to know the sex of it but then we prayed in my you know you, as you know me I'm a I'm a woman of God so we prayed and we chose two names that if it was a girl we're going to call her Lois who is the grand uh, mother of um Timothy that is faith so we said if it's a girl we're going to call her that if it's a boy we had a name um Jeremy for a boy and um, I was very sick throughout my pregnancy. I was spitting from day one to when the baby came along. And um, I, I wasn't pretty at all, but I was so excited looking forward to the baby. We, you know, it, she was our first daughter. And when a, a first child coming, you want to buy everything. You want to make everything perfect. So we did. Um, fortunately or unfortunately for me, I didn't have any family member or anybody around it was just myself and my husband and church family so and then the baby was overdue so baby came um i had to have an emergency cesarean because she was overdue and the baby was distressed but when baby came along i tell you that was the most joyous day of my life you know because we see um we see people in, for me the excitement was pushing the baby in pram i thought oh you know it's so cute seeing people pushing their babies in, in pram because back when we did you had to carry the baby at your back isn't it so i was like oh you know for all the ribbons and stuff and it, it was it was joyous it was uh oh, you're taking me back to those days but it was i i thought it was a blessing Nana, you have four, you have four children. We've spoken about the challenges and how to juggle that with work and having kids. How did that impact you? Uh, mommy, I, I had a, a great support system at home. You know, we've been, uh, Easter Sunday will be 23, going on 24 years of marriage. So from day one, my we said we were going to have two, a boy and a girl. That's what we all say. And, um, I don't know what happened and then number two came number three came and number four came <laughs> but i've always had a great support system my husband supports me 120 percent we it's just the two of us that have raised our kids and because we think alike because we do everything together it's always been so i had to um give up work to to be a stay-at-home mom for 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 the first i mean the first two and then stayed home before doing all the things that i do but because my husband didn't understand and being the man that he is he said you know what i will take care of you you stay home take care of the, the kids and i will work but then it got to a point i was i was restless because i'm that sort of a person who wants to do stuff i was very dependent before I, I got married. So um, I I had a Mary Kay consultant who came in to share the Mary Kay career with me. And then we we I started my Mary Kay business, but we've always worked around the kids. Up to, even up to now, we've worked around the kids. So I would say that to God be the glory, I never experienced anything. It was, it, it was happy, happy days. When I would sleep off and forget that I had babies, my husband was always up you know babysitting or um or making sure baby was having milk and all that so for me it's been a a wonderful journey that that's amazing lona no nana church has said um the first time she had a child she kept on spitting from the beginning to the end and you know women we tend to say that oh it's so painful but we end up going for a second round is it that <laughs> painful to the point that you know, I especially have to, you know, look forward to you. <laughs> um, I think, I think for me, I would say 
when you're going through like the pregnancy symptoms, so like um, Mama said, um, constantly spitting or nausea, whatever symptoms come to you during your pregnancy, sometimes you will tell yourself, oh, this is too much. Oh, I'm so tired. Oh, I feel sick. Oh, I can't do this anymore. This is my last. But I always say this to people, the moment your baby comes and you hold your baby in your arms for the first time, you literally say to yourself, every bit of pain I endured for however long my pregnancy was, it was all worth it. It was all worth it. So after that, you actually don't mind doing it again and maybe again and again. <laughs> Barbara, it's not that you don't mind, it happened. It's true, it happens, but the moment, like, it's literally love at first sight when you have your baby. It is yeah. love at first sight. So um, no matter how difficult your pregnancy was, and I know there's some pregnancies out there that are so difficult, you feel like it was all worth it in the end because you're in love for the rest of your life. You're in love with that little human being. So, yeah. <laughs> so what advice would you give to people like me and people that want to become, you know, want to have children? Lorna, I'd like to come to you. I would definitely encourage any, any woman to who have a real desire and passion to be a mother, then go for it. So, Seeker, I would definitely encourage you to be uh, to go for it. I believe you'll be a, a wonderful mother. Um, oh, thank it you. comes it does come with its challenges, but I echo what Barbara said. You know, when you've done it the first time, you think. And you think, oh, I can't do this again or again, you know. But even just experiencing it once um, is an amazing feeling. I My life changed once I had my first daughter. And I would encourage anyone who has a real desire. Um, and if you've got that nurturing spirit in you that you want to share that and give that love to, to somebody, I encourage you to, to go ahead and, and become a mother if that's what you want to do. You want to do. Absolutely. How about you, Nana? Well, you know, um, motherhood, it's everybody is different. Right. And when we when I had um Lois because she was the first one, you know, all the attention and everything, you know, the love, the Christian, everything. And then Esther came along and the three the first three um, Lois, I had a cesarean, Esther had a normal birth, and then the last two, I had all cesareans. That's what I'm done. And the experience that the the experience that I had with all of them was the spitting. I think the four of them I was I was spitting and all that. But apart from that, the 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 cravings and everything was different, and every woman is different. What I tell young ladies or you know, married people who want to have kids is that. You know, sometimes we put pressure on ourselves, and then when the it's not happening, then we we become stressed out, and all that goes on. So, if say you are married, enjoy the moment, and then maybe if you plan with your spouse, your husband, that okay, we want to spend time or have some good time for maybe the first second year, and then maybe in our third year. We want to start a family. It, the planning is very important. But then if it also just happens, yes, praise be to God, you enjoy the moment. But um, you also have to know that it can affect you mentally when you're saying, I want to have a baby, I want to have a baby, and the baby is not coming. So I would say enjoy the moment. And then when you're ready and it happens, you know, you, you give your love like um, Lorna and Barbara said, you know, the, the children enjoy that love from their mom. I I didn't have um, a mother around, you know, so I, it took some time. It took some time for me to have that motherly um, um, 
instincts or the motherly feeling unlike my husband he was hands-on he sometimes i would say let's swap be the mother and let me be the father but obviously god knows why he created me as as the mother and you know as 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 they, they've grown i've seen that love you know i've nurtured that love so please if you're a woman and you're listening to us and you want to start a family and all that just enjoy the moment and then when it happens you know, it will, it will be the most beautiful, beautiful, beautiful experience that you can have. Oh, lovely. And Barbara? Um, I think Nana and Lorna just said everything perfectly. Um, I think it's important to know that when it's your time, it's your time. Because like Nana said, sometimes we tend to Put too much pressure on ourselves as women to have a baby by a certain period in our life or a specific age but it's definitely important to know that when it's your time it's your time and like i said previously um having a baby is um it's a life-changing experience but it's a blessing because um like lorna said previously there is like no perfect textbook or tutorial book on how to become a mother or how to be the perfect mother it's literally learn as you go and if you have that support system around you then they can also teach you things that you will need to know about being a parent or a mother as well but it's just every moment is a blessing even those moments that may not feel like the greatest moments or you may not feel like you're enjoying yourself at that present moment it's all a learning experience and it's just something that no one can teach you because every mother is different and once you do become a mother it's also very important that you remember at all times that you are unique you are a mother in your way and even the littlest things that you do even if it's just a full day at home where you cook breakfast for all your kids do the school run or maybe you're helping your child out with a CV or job applications or cleaning vomit off the floor, whatever it is, at the end of the day, I always say this to mothers and to myself, give yourself a big pat on the back because it's not an easy job. It's not a job that comes with a rule book on what to do and what not to do. It's something that you just have to learn as you go and you just have to use your patience and all of God's blessings to just continue to embark on that journey. So I would say when your time comes, just enjoy every moment of it from the first day you find out that you're pregnant right up until when your child is married and leaving the nest or, you know, traveling the world, whatever it is, just enjoy every moment. Oh, thank you so much. I've taken can I can I add to what yeah, Barbara also said? You know, raising the kids, the being a mom also, you 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 have to have this, it's a discernment. I think you pray to God for wisdom because I had to pray because they are four different human beings. You know, as much as they are your children, they are individuals with their own um character, their own mindset, their own everything. But your home, the home is their training ground. And sometimes I would say that how your, your child become is what goes on in your surroundings. So it's very important that as we raise them up, what we say to them, how we, I didn't know how to hug the kids. I didn't know how to say, I love you. Because I, when I was growing up, I didn't hear anybody saying, I love you. It's all, it was the knocking and the shouting and the screaming. You know, so it's so important that we have to bear in mind that we cannot compare the kids. You know, sometimes we 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 compare the kids. You cannot compare your children. You cannot compare. I cannot compare Lois to Esther, and you know they are individual beings. So treat them the way you and make time for each and every one of them. Find what they like. Find what they don't like. You know, and then and and bond with them. Sometimes some because of what they go mothers go through they're not able to bond with their children so it's important that we learn that as well that love language it's 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 a process you know so that we don't beat ourselves down because 
we will go and look at X and their and their mom, and we think, what am I doing wrong? Just enjoy your children, you know. And and when you do that, then you end that love that. So that when they go out of the nest, as Barbara said, they will still come back to you. Because you know some kids, because of what goes on, they want to leave and not come back. But you want the kids to grow and always be. That's why we celebrate him, Marvis, so that they have that thing. When they hear their mom's name, they are jumping for joy. They are looking forward to coming home to see mom. That is how we need to nature our children. Thank you so much. I've taken a lot on board. I really have. We appreciate you. We love you. We adore you. I know it's not easy, but you make it seem so easy. So we want to celebrate Mother's Day every day, not just today, every single day. Yes. So yeah. happy Mother's Day. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.